Okay, who's ready to build some ramps? Okay, so here I have the guides for the Cactus Jack ramps. Provided courtesy of ICP Jugla. Thank you kindly. So, first thing I'm going to do is just keyframe a short animation. So that I can put this side. Rotate 90 degrees and that way the top is the top and the bottom will be facing the bottom. recommend using a reference image to try and get those details. So let's see where we're going to start here. I guess we'll do this one. roughly the width of the base of the ramp. Give it a little bit of height. I need to lock my controls so you guys can see them. Oh, that sucks. segments. Yeah. So then we're going to add an edit poly modifier. And then we're going to use the scale tool. So what we want to do here is match the height of our guide, roughly. But first, we need to establish our basic ramp shape. Now looking at my reference image, have their size. And I 
gaps on the wall here. Once we get this set up, the rest starts to flow really fast. So it's kind of important to take a little bit of time here to get this right. And one thing you should note is that <coughs> you can use the ramp guide in wireframe mode or use edge faces so that you can see the direction in which the faces or edge loops go and do your best to try and follow those same angles as you go along. So now that I have the poly selected here, I can just keep switching back to poly mode will have it selected for me each time unless I deselect that for some reason. So now what we can start to do is uh, extrude, but let's first just see, check another angle. Make sure it's lined up. It's very important with each step that you check multiple So now that we're at the ramp kind of evens out here, we can change the angle of these faces. Okay, so let's 
notice that I used just one large extrusion for this section. That's because there wasn't much variance in the ramp. But now that we're going to be trying to make this tight bend, we're actually going to need a lot of extrusions or a lot of segments in order to make the bend. So <coughs> what I'll, I'll go with this. Adjust the angle slightly. getting over a cold. Sorry about my voice. <coughs> there we go. Yeah, you can kind of see I'm loosely trying to match these angles here. Just double check. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Oh, I need to select the ramp still. start to deviate when you guys are using just grab all the uh, vertices and adjust them accordingly. Uh, if you're a novice, you're going to have to take extra care doing this as it's really easy to miss a lot of things. Alright, so we just keep moving along here. Extruding, rotating, Ben gets tighter, we're going to need more and more segments in order to make this smooth transition.
especially tight bend. Now I know that there are other methods of building ramps which are a lot faster and easier, but this is the, the method that I've come to use for trying to capture, you know, those custom details that just can't seem to get with those easier methods like extruding along a path or extrusion shapes. It takes a little longer but this gives me more control. Now you notice that this edge here probably not as rounded as you would like to see it in your final ramp, but we don't need to worry about that too much because we're going to be adding some smoothing on this later, and it'll add extra points in order to make that a nice rounded curve. rotating you gotta be careful to be rotating on the right axis or what could start happening is stuff like this and once that happens the rest of your extrusions are gonna be all wonky so you gotta pay attention with each step stretch now the bend is almost over
so I'm just looking at my reference image. Looks as though this ramp wall is actually connected to this one. What I usually do is I bridge the polys afterwards, so we can worry about that a little bit later. Let's just finish this up. Polygon extreme. match the ramp guide so that when our ball travels around in BP it won't appear to go beneath the, beneath the ramp floor.
almost there. Save an extra copy. Okay. So let's have a look at them. First thing we're going to notice is it looks kind of blocky here, but then smooth here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the reason for that is that our first segment had a poly uh, smooth group applied, but for each extrusion there was no smoothing added. So to fix this, you just pretty much got to select the whole thing in poly mode and go over to our polygon smoothing groups and hit clear all. Now, everything is blocky. So now let's just say we wanted to use just this ramp as a really, really low poly ramp. What we could do is select all these rigid walls. select these and then you can add a smooth group click that and you can see that that's all smooth you can do the same with the ramp floor now the reason I don't just apply it to the entire thing is that can cause some mesh distortion as it I'm not sure exactly why. I guess it's because the, the smoothing groups overlap or something like that. But I find it works better if you do it in segments like this, like the ramp, floor, the walls, and so forth. So that's two. So that wall was one. The floor is two. This wall will be three. Okay. Okay. So I mean, I can continue to do that for each of these walls. Oh, I can see I have some stuff to fix up here too. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Okay. Let's just clear all again. part of the ramp will be visible on the table, but 
this button here. You got to do something. That's the challenge with these lamps is they bend and twist in such a way that it can be difficult to reproduce sometimes. Okay. So, <coughs> right now, my ramp looks pretty shit, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so that's why what we need to do, add another edit poly modifier. See, that way, if I do anything to edit the ramp that I don't like, like, you know, it's just, I don't know, like I accidentally deleted a bunch of these polys like an idiot, right? Then what I can do is just delete this, and it'll go back to what I had below in the modifier stack. So it's just an edit the original poly. <coughs> Okay, now there's two methods for adding smoothing and rounding the edges that I like to use. Okay, so if we put the turbo smooth modifier on in one iteration, it looks much better already. However, you'll notice that we've lost a lot of the rigidity in our ramp. It's become too rounded. So let's go to this edit poly mode. Show end result on, off, on, off. Okay, so in order to make this or maintain this kind of squarish shape and still have smoothing, what we had need to do is add in more edges with swift loops where we want to tighten up the corners. So, see if I go like that, it's rounded. But then if I add this edge in, it's sharper here. See, if I add another edge in on the other side, it's sharper, much sharper. I'm going to do the same for the corners. You can see that's much better, right? Much better. Okay. <coughs> so, the other method that I like to use for this is we select this edge loop and we're going to chamfer it. Oop, sorry about that. Let's go over here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Except we'll make it two segments like this. It should be a bit nicer. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Alright. So now, the advantage to this method is that we don't actually even need Turbo Smooth. It'll actually give it rounded edges, and we can add smooth groups 
to all these parts to make it look smooth and actually produce a pretty low poly model that still has rounded edges. So that that's what I've been doing lately is making two versions of the ramp, one without turbo smooth and one with. And uh, that way I can still provide a really low poly ramp for people who don't have as good a hardware as so many other people. And still provide a really nice smooth ramp for the people who can handle it, which seems to be more and more people these days. So ramps are getting nicer all the time. select this edge and since the chamfer was the last thing I did I can just hit repeat here and it'll give it the exact same attributes which gives me a consistent results so now we turn on end result This one, repeat. Well, okay, no, that screws it up. All right, let's apply our material. So now let's say you've gone through this process, but you've found that after the turbo smooth, you have a lot of unnecessary faces. Like for example, we don't really need this edge in the middle here. It's just, it's not contributing to the shape of the object, really. So if we add another edit poly on top of our turbo smooth, select this edge. Now you may not have have the same hotkeys as me, so I'll just show you the manual method of doing this. So what you want to do is you want to hold control and click remove. See that? Now that removes the entire edge as well as the vertices that were associated with that edge. You see, so what happens is if I just mode, all the vertices are still there, just the edge has been removed. So that doesn't really do us any good because we're still going to have the same vertice count, although we've reduced the face count, we haven't reduced the vertice count, so we haven't actually accomplished anything in terms of improving performance. So we'll just hold control and do that, and then as you can see, the vertices are gone. I could probably do the same with these ones. However, I think they are probably contributing a little bit to the rounded edge here. So I think, you know, when our lighting hits that, it, it's going to help make it look a little nicer and catch more light. So I think we'll do that. It's acceptable. Studio Max, dark style.